Hi there folks, I hope everyone's well. So today's recipe I'm going to be making a bloomer bread. The main reason I make bloomers is to go with my lentil bolognese, but obviously you can make a bloomer and it can go with anything you want it to. It just happens to be that's the particular dish that I like to have my bloomers with. Um, so without further ado, let's crack on and let's make a gorgeous bread. So first things first, add 250 millilitres of water to the bowl section on the floor of your oven if you have a steam bake function. If not, add it to a low rimmed oven proof dish that you've sat on the oven floor. This is so we can generate some steam as we're baking the bread as it will give us a much nicer crust. And it's better to do it now rather than forget. Now measure out 500 grams of strong bread flour. We're looking for any flour really with 14 grams of protein or more. I use my actual machines mixing bowl so it's nice and light so I get a more accurate measurement on my scales than using my heavier rising bowl. But use what works best for you. Then to one side of the bowl add two teaspoons of fast action otherwise known as easy bake yeast and then flick over some of the flour from within the bowl just to cover it up. And diagonally opposite on the other side of the bowl we're going to add two teaspoons of table salt and again we're going to flick some of the flour from within the bowl over the top of the salt to cover it up also. Now if you've weighed everything into your rising bowl you don't need to transfer it but because as I've already mentioned I measure and weigh in this bowl because it's quite light so it just helps my accuracy I think then transfer it over to another bowl so that this one's ready for the oil and water. And now that it's empty add three tablespoons of olive oil to your food mixers bowl. And we now need to prepare our water. So to do that, add 200 millilitres of cold tap water to your measuring jug. And then add another one part boiling water, or slightly over one part boiling water. Because in overall, we're looking for 310 millilitres of water here. And we need it to be in the temperature range of between 39 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius optimum rise coming out of our yeast. Too hot it will kill the yeast and too cold it won't rise just as fast as we want it to. So the two parts cold to one part boiling water gets us in that temperature range most of the time. And once we're sure that the water is within the temperature range we're going to add that to the mixing bowl. And from there we can add our flour along with its yeast and its salt into the water. Now the reason we do this is your machine will bring the dough together much faster if we put the flour on top of the water and not the other way around. And from here we want to set our machine to kneading speed, whatever that may be for your machine. It's normally quite a low speed and then we're going to wait for it to start to come together and when we see the dough coming together we're then going to start a timer and we're going to knead it for 10 minutes. Early on, as the dough starts to come together, you are likely to see some sticking happening to the side walls. Now, it's recommended to remove this. You should turn your machine off and then go in about it. I'm being a little bit naughty here by sliding my spatula in whilst it's moving. I was kind of doing it for expediency's sake, just so you could see what was happening on the video much easier. But really, the ideal situation is you turn your machine off and then go in with the spatula and not be a naughty boy the way I'm doing it. Now, if your dough looks a little bit sticky, which it does on this one, I've probably added a little bit much water. There's probably slightly more than the 310 milliliters in that jug. So to combat that, we're just going to sprinkle in a little bit of flour as the machine's moving, just to get the dough a little bit less sticky. But remember, this is still supposed to be quite a sticky dough. So it is just a small sprinkling, we're not dumping a whole lot in here because by the time it's done we're still going to see the entire bottom of the actual uh, base of the pan here with dough stuck to it but we don't want it sort of sticking and going up the side walls at the same time. So that, that's sort of the, the visual cue that I'm looking at is yes it will still be on the bottom but not going up the side walls. And as you saw it wasn't a huge amount of sprinkled in there, it was just a tiny little amount. And as we get to the end here, as you see, there still is a reasonable amount of sticking. As I says, we're looking for a, quite a sticky dough here. 
but it's now looking very smooth. There's a little bit of sticking happening on the side walls, but not just as much as what we were seeing, because it was a tiny, tiny amount of dough, uh, flour that we added into the dough. The main thing, other than the stickiness, is that we've got a lovely smooth dough now here. And to get any of the residue that has stuck to the sides of the pan, just use a silicon dough scraper, and if you don't have one, use a spatula similar to the one I was using earlier, and make sure your hands are very well oiled with some cooking oil, just so you can transfer it without it sticking to you when you're putting it in the bowl. And just before we do transfer it, oil both the rising bowl and the lid, which is going to be sitting on top of it. This particular one in this size of bowl, it shouldn't touch the top, but I just like to be safe. Anytime I'm making a dough, I always oil both parts. And as I mentioned, make sure those hands are oiled and then we're going to go in and we're going to transfer the dough across. Because they're oiled, we can slide our hands down the dough hook and make sure we're getting every little bit of dough before we transfer it into the bowl. Then just take and form it into a ball. Use your fingers and the heels of your hands to tuck and roll, tuck and roll, so that you're pressing in with the tips until you've got a lovely ball and then just set it in here. And we're going to cover it and we're going to let it rise for an hour and a half. And once the hour and a half is up, we're going to remove the dough from the bowl. We're going to knock it back with the heels of our hand. And again, just use a dough scraper, just like the one you see here, to help you remove all of the dough from the bowl. Now set your dough on a silicon liner and form a loose but quite a compact rectangle because from this we're going to start folding our dough to start creating tension in it. We don't want it too large or we'll end up with a baguette shape rather than a bloomer shape. Take and fold your far away edge towards the middle then take your closest edge and fold it all the way over and then press down the seam with the back of your hand, or the heel of your hand. Now take and reform your rectangular shape again, and repeat the same folds. So we're going to take and fold the far away edge, and then fold the closest edge. As you see, I'm using my fingertips here to help spread out and form the rectangle, and not just the heels of my hand. And then we take and we close off the seam again with the heel. Now you can stop here if you want and form your bloomer shape or if you're getting quite a big egg shape what you can do is you can take and fold the two like the length of it together and repeat the process one more time before tucking and forming the shape. And now that we have the sort of bloomer shape that we're looking for take and cover it with a flour sack cloth or two and we're going to let it rise for an hour and ten minutes. And once we've given it the hour and ten minute rise, we'll see the dough has massively increased in size. We're looking for about a doubling. We're then going to cut with a very sharp knife three diagonal slices between two to three centimetres deep in the very centre. Obviously, the edges are just as deep. Spray it with water and then we're going to dust it with flour. So sprinkle over the flour, then very gently with your fingertips rub the flour over it. But don't go in like a massive klutz and crush your dough. That'd be disastrous. So very, very gently. And now into your oven, which was preheated to 200 degrees Celsius. Set to steam bake function if your oven has that. Set to fan function if your oven is just using a tray at the bottom with the water in it. And we're going to cook the dough in here for 25 minutes. And when our 25 minutes have passed, we're going to turn our oven down to 180 degrees Celsius and we're going to cook it for a further 15 minutes. And now we can remove it from the oven and we're going to set it on a wire rack to cool. Once we put it on the wire rack, we're going to cover it with a couple of flour sack cloths. The reason we do this is it helps keep the moisture in the bread. You're going to have a much, much fluffier, much moister, much tastier bread than if you don't cover it up and just let it cool in the, the fresh air. So cover it up with your cloths. And once your bread is fully cooled, not before, although warm bread can be nice, so sometimes maybe before, but generally let it fully cool because that helps the structure form perfectly. We're going to take a really sharp knife or we're going to take a bread knife and we're going to chunk, cut chunky big doorsteps because nothing better than big thick slices on your homemade bread. And 
from here we're looking to add slatherings of whatever spread it is we're using. I'm using flora because it's a vegan spread and we tend to go that way. Not saying you have to, but that's the way we tend to go when we can go that way. So whatever butter spread is your choice, the one you like the most, slather it all over so we get a nice, thick, lovely coating. So there we go, one bloomer loaf made, all buttered up, ready to go with my ball of knees. But I won't tell if you don't tell that I'm about to have a wee bit. Bit much butter on it. Never enough butter on it. Excuse me. Absolutely lovely. The crust is just perfect. Just the right depth of crust to make it absolutely crunchy, scrumptious, but lovely aerated bread. Let's see if we can get a bigger bit. Look at that. Look at that. But with slabs of butter. So I'll be having this with my bolognese when my bolognese is ready. Which you might be able to hear cooking away. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.